Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney and this is Fun Art Friday. I'm so excited about tonight because we're going to be painting this really cute but easy and beginner friendly truck. Now our Friday nights are paintings that are more focused for new artists or beginners. We're going to break down every single step. How to, to help me do that is my husband John. Hey guys. He makes sure that our cameras are kind of aimed in the general right direction and that you guys can see every technique that I'm doing. Some so days. That, some days. So that as I'm explaining it or I'm doing a color mix or I'm doing something, you guys can really be in the action. And what we find is, is if you guys can see it, you guys can duplicate it. Now, tonight's show vibe is a little more chill and a little more goofy because mm -hmm. it's fun Friday. Because we can do that. You could be any level of painter. could be a very experienced painter. If you feel like coming in and painting, you can also just come by and chat. There's never any obligation to paint. You can come just hang with your friends. Um, another fun thing about tonight is that on Friday nights, I'm going to be using 9 by 12 canvases consistently on the boards. So that's a nice cost-saving thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be working with the abstract paint for a while so you guys can save some money there. But, of course, you can use whatever paint you have. And the colors for this are really nice because there's something that you can get very inexpensively that you probably already have in your base paint kit right now. It's almost a primary painting. Um, the only thing that makes it uh, more colors than primary is that I went ahead and added thalo green just so that you guys could get some bright, happy greens out of it. Are you guys ready to... to do we need more bubbles? I feel like I need another row of bubbles. I think we need more bubbles. And I feel like the bubbles, like there was enough bubbles. Mmm. Like... <sighs> <sighs> that's how i wish the world felt all the time mm -hmm. right here it doesn't but i i it does right now and that's what's important can't do it all day but it does right now oh my goodness all right let's get into the materials okay and kind of hop in so the original study i did on an 8 by 10 but we like to work 9 by 12 so i'm gonna put this aside as a reference uh, we put wishes on our canvas as an act of optimism and hopefulness. Uh, there's a wish for Diane Husband to be okay and healthy and get great results. Um, then a safe move for Kim, who is still like going through the move in the middle of all of this. Uh, and I'm also wishing a safe return to work and a safe return to businesses being open for everyone. I hope that that goes as smoothly as possible. Uh, lots of people find the live event. We're certainly hoping that they come up with a vaccine for coronavirus and that the retreat is open this fall because I am ready to do that. I have paint all over my hand. I don't even know where it came from. Do you? Being an, this is being an artist. Is that an artist? You don't really need to do much past this. This is makes that, you the artist right here. Is that side effect? It is. <laughs> the side effects. So I have here, I'm using this paint and I like this paint because it is... Um, a more economical paint, um, certainly on par, you know, in cost, it's, it's actually, I think, a little cheaper than basics, um, but it's high quality, and it's made by the same people who make my paint that I use here, professional paint, which means you can upgrade when you want to easily, mm. right? So we have our cat red, we've got our Mars black, we have our thalo blue, we have thalo green, we have titanium white and we have cad yellow. Now, if you want the exact 11 colors that I am always using, the mods can drop a link to our store because we have a kit of the colors. But you can find these a lot of places. If you're in Canada, you can find them at King's Framing and Art and several other vendors. So hmm. it's available around the world. People like it's it. out there. It's out there. Let's brush our wishes, which we're done with a uh, watercolor pencil so that they will do this cool thing. See how they're doing this cool thing? Hey, look, a gnome arrived. A gnome? A gnome. Did we do gnomes? What's a gnome? A gnome is a text notification that comes from John and I. Uh, they're not from the platforms. They're not, you know, any of that. They come from John and I to mm. let you guys know that we're doing a thing live. And you might want to come hang out and chat and paint with us and that it could be fun. Holy kind cow. Of the basic thing about the Wait, gnome. you're telling me you do these things live? <laughs> What's that like? I mean, is, it, is there pressure in that? Is that like hard? Is, it, is this one live? This is live. Are we live right now? We're live right now. Oh my gosh. I'm sure I'll drop something or do something goofy to convince you thoroughly that it's live. But yeah, these aren't pre-recorded. This isn't one of those streams where they pre-record a video and then stream it live and pretend it's live. It's not like that. If I fall down or run away from a spider, it's happening all in real time. Spiders. I shouldn't even have said it. You now, should now have I have, have like put it into the now, universe. That's right. You're uh, 
they've dropped they, they have visited they have visited before and you know i love all of god's creatures but sometimes i wish some of them would stay outside the spiders visited yeah it was too much of a visit and it wasn't that cute little fat spider that's in the videos it was the i'm <laughs> spidering you spider <laughs> So what I'm doing here, if you're really brand new to painting, it's nice to prime your brushes by getting them wet. But with acrylic, you want to drag off the extra water so the brush isn't soaking. I like to use brushes with synthetic filaments because, <laughs> you know, <laughs> acrylic be messing up your brush. And I'm going to do an interesting trick. I'm going to load up at first with white. So I'm doing that. Vroom, 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 vroom. Dippy, dippy. I'll zoom in on that. You're That's doing like... Not only is this really helpful for loading paint into your brush. Why are you doing that? So That's what a lot that of... does when I do that into my brush, it, it puts a bunch of paint in the belly of my brush so that when I take it to my canvas, I can paint like a whole bunch of it in one shot. Okay, so you weren't just playing. <laughs> yeah. No, it is, it is playful and I do enjoy the activity, but it actually has purpose. Oh, well, that's, you know. So I, I can't really heckle you about it. So I like to paint the canvas white first because it's real a easy to go too dark with the sky. I'm painting from the upper right towards the lower left in a diagonal stroke. This no. is very fine art stuff we've got going on here, John. Why are you doing that instead of like horizontal or vertical? I feel like when you look at the piece that the sky being like that gives it a little energy oh. as if wind is moving or something's oh. happening. Because sometimes simple paintings can get a little static. They don't have the drama. I'm going to go ahead and come over and I'm going to get a little bit of my blue into the edge and then a little of my white. And what I'm going to try to do is what's called loosely mixed, which means I'm not going to thoroughly incorporate the colors into each other. I'm going to have them be all kind of like mishmashy. Can I say we yes? have a ridiculously awesome amount of people with us here today? Do we have a ridiculously awesome amount of people? Yeah, we're like we're like Sherpa for sure. Are we Sherpa? Yeah, I think we're Sherpa. We could like do some bubble for Sherpa dancing. I'm going to have to do some Sherpa bubbles. As soon as I paint my wet into okay. wet, we're going to do a celebratory people showed up to paint with us dance. Can I ask you something? You, well, you can. Okay, so you, you say that not to make patterns, right? Yes. But there seems to be like a pattern to those to the strokes, like where they make little, like, is that, is that okay? So what I'll do is like where they're, they're making like little segments oh, that are, wow. I can measure it. I come back with some white and I kind of blend it out. Oh yeah. And this is something that can happen to you because the brushes, I mean, you look at it, it's, it's a particular width. This one is like, this is a one and quarter inch brush. That's a weird size, isn't it? One and quarter. Just be one. <laughs> Well, you could have gotten a one, but you got a one and a quarter. I think it's because probably it was originally created for the millimeter. It's a 30 millimeter brush. That seems real, reasonable. Because this, this is a European brand of brush. They probably were like, I didn't make it one and a quarter. I made it 30 millimeters, which is a very sensible, sensible measurement of brush. Okay. And your, your American inches have messed with me. I'm going to load this right here, and then we're going to do bubbles and a dance because the background needs to dry anyways. Yeah, can you tell me something? I can tell, what are you, would you like to know, sir? Tell me about that repetition of pattern. So what happens is if I make too many, like, where it's like stripe, 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 it's not uh -huh. really going to feel like sky. How come? Well, because sky doesn't really stripe. There's no nature that does that. Well, there is nature, but generally it's poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> Repetitive is, stripes. Don't go there. Yeah, Snakes. when nature starts making strong, colorful patterns, it's a good time to pay attention. <laughs> oh my gosh, Mark. Thank you very much. He sent a wonderful little mug of sticker. Mark, little... thank you for stickering there's us. A, and look, we painted a blue sky background. See that happy? Blue sky background. And if you like want it like a little bit dark, you can always come back with some blue. Mark, Mark knows this. Is it Mark Bergeron? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mark knows Dude, that. Mark has painted a bunch. Yeah, Mark paints every single day. He's like on painting thousand bazillion -dy, zillion. -dy. Okay, so only he is he is the only other person I know. Who, like I would say, he paints second to you as far as I'm aware. Maybe your mom is is in that running too. But I think Mark's do, tapped us Mark's, all out. Yeah, I think Mark's Mark maybe daily. If, that's. If That's quantity is man. a factor. Well, I'm just saying. Because he is committed to the daily paint. Yeah. He does it. He and he started it last last year, acrylic April, and never stopped. All right, so, so we have a nice, like, little blue sky. Can you see the little blue streaks in the sky? I'm going to rinse my brush out. Do. 
They're and put it to the side. You don't want to leave paint in your brush. If you're really new to painting, you don't want to leave your brush in water because that will start to break the ferrule and the wood on the brush. And you don't want to leave paint on it because that will ruin the brush. Shall we bubble? And be of like, course. dude, we did a, a bubble? we did a background. And Mark gave us a sticker. Oh, the did background. background. That we back- got a sticker. You, know gonna- you did a background. You, did. you get a sticker. <laughs> Look at that background. That These background bubbles are right for there. you. Look at that background. See, look how good that background is. Yeah. It's, it's all. Painting. See, look. It's it's good. And we have we have bubbles. And, and we're Sherpa. And we're, oh, my gosh. We're so Sherpa. We're so Sherpa. We're Sherptastic. Yeah. I would say Sherptastic. We started it a while ago. We would go live whenever we were like, I don't know, Sparta was out and we'd be like, we are Sherpa. Oh my gosh. That was like, so it was long. funny at the time. It's like kind of a, kind of like a stale joke now, but we're never going to let it go. So I have to remember, like I, I, I remember the original broad <laughs> broadcast equipment. You know, what's really funny mm. is I also have a remote. No! <laughs> <laughs> I can also turn all the lights off. Whoosh. Oh, Whoosh. stop it. <gasps> oh, I almost fell. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, don't do that. <laughs> I backed up and it went dark and I almost went over my paint cart. <gasps> don't do that. See? And then you would know it was live because injury. <laughs> the terrible so, way to get viewers. Thank you, Barbara. Barbara just said some bubblicious, like, she said, thank you for being you. And really, you know, Barbara, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for everybody who's come out here and supported us tonight. We really appreciate you joining us. And Shelly, oh my gosh, that's a that's a pretty name. Shalia? Shalia just sent some, I think, some Australian dollars because it has a big capital A Thank in front so of the Thank you so much. So I'm We interest- really appreciate our fam all over the world. Oh my gosh. So all I'm enamored whenever I see the different symbols that come from all over the world. More than the amount, the symbols are kind of interesting to me because that means they come from someplace mm-hmm. else. Guess what? People turn in to watch paint dry. I'm just saying, like, right now, factually. Paint dry. You're watching paint dry. And whenever I say that, I think of dressage. (laughs) (laughs) Dressage. I think. Don't be angry at me, dressage people. You know what I'm saying. There's a lot of subtle communication going on. It's not a big show. It's a very small show. I understand it's a a total art form. Okay, so. Not really a spectator. Jenny, Jenny's got a question. I have an answer, Jenny. So. Jenny would like to know, what is that black surface that your canvas is sitting upon? Well, my this easel is designed for much larger canvases than I paint on. So um, I want to stabilize my smaller canvases, and I put a 16 by 20 burlap canvas there and started painting it black. Uh, you know, remember that 100 coats? Mm-hmm. We have buried the needle on that. Somebody who's been watching it, us for true. a while could say F almost every single show. There, I'm, I'm think we're at 300, 400 oh coats. My gosh, this yeah. is what 300, this... 400 coats of paint looks like. You can we'll just keep painting. Well, I'm going to find a I science make show. A, I'm I miss find all the good si- YouTuber. No, seriously. We'll find a science show that does like, um, oh, no, not Siri. Siri is trying to answer me over here. She's like, what do you want to know? I'm like, stop it. Do you love it when like your Lex and Siri are like, we're listening. We've got it. Okay. We're listening. Now you're supposed to be painting. I got to dry this. Can you so I can that? sketch in the truck. Can I say thank you to people while you're doing that? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dry the canvas so I can sketch in the truck. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. And John is going to talk to you guys for a second. So you paint dry is a little more entertaining. Okay. I'll okay. do that. You know what's really funny is when is you, you give me. You didn't plug an, it in? You say, oh, my oh gosh. sweetie, you're I'm so, so ready. I'm the ready. The whole show is ready. I'm ready. Ready. There's not a thing. Ready. I can't fault you for a blog. I feel like that's the very thing to fault you for. Like, then they wouldn't know it's why. Is this is this the plan? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Plugging in. Let's help the easel. <laughs> Gosh, what button did I push? This button. Now go. That one. Okay. What does she do? Okay, so this is the action 80 shot there. Okay. okay. So, all right. We push this. There, there's your reference picture back. Thank you guys for joining us. It is amazing to see you guys out here. I have to scroll back up here and say, Vanessa, thank you very much. I appreciate it. 
the the strange doolars that those are coming from. You must be from America, that place. So thank you. I've seen that symbol before. But I think that the dancing lemon here is probably what's... I, I have not seen... That's probably the coolest sticker I think I've seen yet is the dancing lemon. It reminds me of lemon head from... Um, Ertens. <laughs> hey, so Cinnamon? Yep. Who is Lemonhead from? What do you mean, who is Lemonhead what, from? What series was that? That was Adventure Time? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, um, yeah. Okay, so so Vanessa just sent up the coolest sticker of this lemon dancing that reminds me a lot of Lemonhead. I loved you. <laughs> it's just... Princess Bubblegum had some questionable morals when it came to science. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> just I... like. I, I understand she was gum. I have to but say, still. Princess Bubblegum had a ruling style that I appreciate. <laughs> she definitely had some stuff going <laughs> she, on. She had a she had a method to her <laughs> process that one could respect. Now I do have a traceable for this. If you haven't ever used one, a traceable is a line drawing of our design, and you transfer that onto the canvas using a variety of methods. You can actually, we have a video on how to use the traceable in case you've never used a traceable. And it isn't cheating that it's actually an art technique that you have to learn. You have to learn projection. You have to learn all these transfer techniques. So it's just something that you do to get your ideas from one media to another media and from different sizes to different places. But that being said, I am going to show you how to freehand it. I will use... <laughs> my t-square a little bit just to help me with the straight lines okay. so so i'm going to come down and i think i'm going to make this about oh gosh an inch and a half from the top this is very arbitrary so i'm gonna come over dude what's that thing you're using i am using a t-square and a dritz taylor's chalk tool Okay, so that's just holding gonna, chalk. Yeah, and I'm going to make a nice line to about, oh gosh, just about the, the four inch mark, maybe a little four and a half inch mark, and then I'm going to come down. I'm just trying to make sure that whenever you're doing a car, cars kind of have straight lines. I'm going to round them out, but if I can get those first lines in there kind of accurately, it does help me. Now, if you do. So like when I come here, and then I can kind of round, see how I'm rounding the. Uh huh. The truck thing down and then if I want to tailgate and this is really interesting I'm going to come across on the tailgate back here and I like you, to give myself a little bit of room can I say what's impressive I don't know what's impressive you said tailgate and it was correct oh really <laughs> is it impressive or surprising because I feel like it may not be impressive it's just surprising to you because I, I'm wrong I, I'm impressed I'm not surprised I'm impressed okay So, okay. Uh, so I am sitting here and I just want to make sure that I have enough of my structure. When I have my tailgate in, I can take, see, I can take my little hubcap off over here. Fender. Fender. See? You got it. You <laughs> Close got it. enough. You got it. And I'm going to do that little, this is a farm truck. They kind of roll out some metal on the gates, I guess, to hold stuff in. The bed, yeah. It's got a little yeah. roll. And I like to, you know, have a bit of a, Rear view mirror, because safety. Yep. You can just bring in a mirror, which is usually fairly slender. I have looked at a lot of these little trucky things. Now I'm going to make a bumper. Going to make a bumper. Bumper goes a little bit past the fender. Right here. Oh, you can always make your bumper thicker if you want to. And then I do like the wheel to kind of come down because it's got to stick out the fender. It does. A bit. It's got to be at least this far in. Oh, my gosh. Queensland, And then I'm Australia. going to bring another little line down. And then Queens what? Queensland, Australia. Hello. Queensland, Australia. Hello, Queensland, Australia. I'm impressed by how far away we have people visit. I'm always it's awesome. Right. Oh, my gosh. In Saudi Arabia. Hello. Hello. Sorry. Let's make our... It's uh, so cool that I have not been to Saudi Arabia. I have not been to Saudi Arabia either. Although I've not been invited or had a reason to. I think you have to have a business invitation. Yeah? Or a, I don't yeah, know. To get a visa to go, you have to be invited. Oh, that's right. Visas. 
<laughs> yeah. Those, it's, it's, you know, those things that governments require to, for you to travel internationally. Did they? Did yeah. I do that? This is like, I like to put a little license plate right here so that, you know, there's a thing. And then I do kind of tend to put some indents into the back of the truck. And everything here will be grass and flowers. That is what it takes to draw in the truck. Okay, so a couple things I'm going to have to say. Okay. First of all, thank you to all of our amazing supportive patrons like Beck. Yes, and very much. Let's see, there's another one over here. I scroll up. Uh, and I told you about Vanessa. But, you know, I am. I just want to say thank you to everybody who's joining us. We have a huge crowd of people. Thank you guys for coming thank by. You. All over the world. And um, Diane was a little late. She didn't bring donuts, but she was curious who I am. Really? Yeah, she was like, okay. So um, there is no way I can turn on the streaming software, cast, <laughs> and paint. <laughs> it would be, it would be a funny show, but a show in which you learned nothing about painting. So my husband is in the control booth, and he switches the cameras, and he zooms in, and he reads comments, kind of makes sure because the, oh, the other thing is if I can see the chat. Also, not a, a funny show, but not informative. <laughs> Because I just start reading it. I'm like, oh, look who all's here. I get very social. So he's kind of like um, our ship's computer. Yep. Right? Oh, sure. Our AI, our hologram. And you... and also I married him, so that's very good. But so That's who that is. We that sometimes I'm... call him stunt hands if you're wondering who that is. Does that mean I'm Sigourney Weaver? It does. If, if this were Galaxy Quest, you are the Sigourney I'm, of I'm, this journey. I will totally take it. I will be Sigourney for a I day. I want to be the you must help us Look, guy. I have but <laughs> one off. job, and it's to read these questions to yes. you. <laughs> but one job. <laughs> now I'm going to do an interesting thing. I'm going to take my black paint. I'm going to load it up onto a number four round. And I'm going to do a similar load that you saw me do on the big brush. And that's just to make sure that I got lots and lots of it into the belly of my brush. And I'm going to sketch a little bit on these outer lines just so that I have that sort of rustic kind of interesting feel about it. Also, it's going to help me when I paint it in a what, little bit. Which brush are you using? This is an Art Sherpa number four round. <laughs> little tip though, you don't ever have to buy my brushes to paint along with me. Is, there's lots of good brushes and they all kind of work. So, I like this one for sure. I wouldn't have made it if I didn't, but you know. Use what you have. It's a it's a good right. It's a good and it's a good, good brush. It does I okay. for some reason am standing like a pirate. <laughs> All right, everyone, wherever you are around the world, take a nice deep breath. <sighs> Whenever you're doing lining, especially if you're new to painting, chances are you're holding your breath right now. I know it's you. I'm probably talking to you. You're probably like answering me back on the Chromecast <laughs> or phone or whatever. Like, I was holding my breath. So every once in a while, if you're doing anything that requires a lot of concentration, take a minute, relax your body, breathe in and out. Mm. Because even though it's painting and we do it to relax, sometimes we can get to concentrating very hard. The other thing I want you guys to notice, and this is super important. Yep. Every brush stroke don't need to be perfect. No, okay. So here's one of the things that is interesting. You say that, but how do I you I think know... I might have locked Twix in our bedroom. Okay, I'll go investigate. But so while you're <laughs> while you're, can you talk about this? This is one of those interesting things that Okay, I just it's pleading. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know what idiots forgot me. You know what's interesting? Hmm. Is that there's there's someone on the second floor watching this stream who might catch this and be able to it's not a 30 second delay so i bet if twig suddenly stops one in 30 <laughs> seconds she will have been rescued <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'm not going to worry about putting these inside lines and i'll do those at the end this is just to help me as i paint in my truck you've totally blown what i was thinking i have no idea what we we're going to say what were you going to say i have no idea you Although, don't even know? Let's paint the whole wheel black. That part is super easy. Look, you painted a wheel. Woo, you're amazing. Karen has the best idea. Karen, what is your idea? She thinks that we should have a retreat at Niagara Falls, Canada. I agree. Agree, I Karen. Mm -hmm. Agree. I think I put on all-wheel tires this time. 
<laughs> so when that's in there, I can come in and I, since my brush has already got a little black in it, I can just bring a little white into my black and that makes gray and just paint in all of my, I'll just go ahead and paint in all of my so, bumper and then put in the love bumper later. Marilyn was asking, can you talk about your breathing and how that helps and why you, you know, what, what approach you take? Cause she's a, she was thinking that breathing helps, but she'd like for you to talk a bit more about what you, I would uh, be happy to, at. yeah, I'd be happy to. I, I think your mom's playing WoW and not watching. <laughs> no, she's here. I promise. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll, I'll go run and take care of that for you while you bubble up and, and, and talk. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> she knows. Uh, it's just like the, the pleading. So here's the deal. When we're painting, our steadiness is really about our body our core and how relaxed we are in our neck and shoulders. But when you're really new, you're so focused and so intent on like making sure that every brushstroke that you do is super duper perfect. And what happens is, is you start to hold a lot of tension in your body and you sometimes will hunch or you'll get in a bad position in your neck or a bad position in your shoulders. But if you can just every once in a while be mindful and give yourself a minute to breathe deep, just be like, I know it sounds silly, but what that does is it creates a nice little cascade of relaxation triggers through your body. And then as you relax and your posture improves, you'll find that you have more control over your brush strokes and what's happening. Do we yes. want to meet? They, they wanted to say hello. Oh, well, somebody needs to say hello. You, you want me to say hello? Oh, there's the baby who got forgotten. We were getting ready and she likes to come in and visit me. And I think she got under the covers because the under the covers is very lovely and cozy and enjoyable and she just wants to be anywhere i am you know how these babies are so this is twix twix is my studio companion and she's my little ragamuffin she's such a sweet girl but she does not like to be abandoned not for anything it's not her favorite she wants to be everywhere usually when i'm painting when you guys see me in the live show she's actually under my feet under the easel or under the table which is only a problem if i drop paint <laughs> There you go, pumpkin. So sorry, we forgot you. So, you know, things that happen in the studio, you might have a studio companion like a cat or a dog or a bird or a lizard, or in the case of one of our longtime community members, a chicken. And I know we used to have a viewer that was a pot-bellied pig. So we certainly get all the viewers. Got some goldfish viewers. You know, we, we are very inclusive here. We are. We are. So that's Twix and... She it's, was feeling lost. She, I'm going to go ahead and load up a little more black and kind of tighten up my... Uh, everyone was very number. excited to see Twix. She's just doing so now, well. She's such a happy girl. Now, can I, is it Twigs like from a branch or is it Twix like a candy? Twix like the candy. And uh, when we got her, when she was a puppy, uh, the community voted and she's actually a right Twix. Ah. She's a right Twix. I'm just making sure I've got a nice little... Black barrier there. That's not bad, right? Super doable. And since I'm going to want to have some control over the next stroke, you can see I'm dipping my brush in water. What I, what I do is I come in and I dip Hold to about here. Can you guys see how deep? Yeah. I don't go too deep because if I do, drips will go down my brush and surprise me when I don't want them to. I'm going to take a little of my black over here to deepen the red so that when I come back, I can pop it because I'll come back with pure red to pop it. Now I'm going to paint. I'm going to get a bigger brush for painting all my truck. You can get a bigger brush. I'm going to get a brush that's the shape of a square. This is called a bright. Uh, brights and flats look a lot alike. Flats just are longer. That's the only difference. Huh. So and if you're out there shopping in the world and you're like, they kind of look the same, but this one says flat and this one says bright. That's the difference is the length out. What is that? How does that result in the effect of the brush? So if I'm painting with craft paint, I might really enjoy a flat because it's long and it's smooth and it really lays a nice smooth application of paint. Uh -huh. But when I'm painting with this type of paint, which is heavy body paint, it won't be strong enough or resilient enough to move the paint along. 
it gets so, bossed around by the paint. We're going to just paint this all in with a little bit of black. Don't get too much black in your red, guys. You want to deepen it like a brick, but not like, you know, turn it into like space. And if, if I can sort of comment on that. You can comment on anything you need to, sir. The Sorry. bright brush is a little firmer. Yes. So it can push that, that thick acrylic paint into the canvas surface. Yeah, or, you fight less of your canvas with it. Whereas with that flat, that longer bristle, it flows that fluid paint more smoothly. It's just perfect for it. And the other thing you might not know, and we're going to talk about these things a lot, especially in these more beginner lessons, because we're going back to the back to the beginning, back to the basics. Back to the basics. Oh so my, gosh. my this brush has a long handle. This brush has a short handle. And this is obviously the same line of brush. Look at how different the size. 26, 6. So just now, get out of your head that these numbers will mean anything meaningful. Mm. So let go of that feeling. But what you're going to want to know is the short handle is better for you if you sit and paint, and the long handle is better for you if you stand and paint. Gotcha. That's the difference between those two. And when I made my brushes for my own brush line, I made them from the perspective of standing and painting. And then when I did some like more research and getting to know my community even better, I learned, oh, you guys mostly sit. So definitely going to rethink that soon. Definitely going to rethink that. Because your experience, that's the one that we've really got to be aware of. Oh, my gosh. I get to practice my Korean. Do you? Yeah. Who? Oh, who from Korea? From where? Young Aseo. Uh-huh. So we have TV Kang Senbeo. And I'm sure I pronounced that bad. But he come on and said hello. And I know I just want to thank you and your entire entertainment industry for all the really awesome rom-coms. Mm -hmm. I just finished Monarch the Eternal, and I'm right now working on the Mystic Pop-Up Bar, which I'm super loving. I'm just kind of powering through everything that I can. I did like the Corpse Bride, and I'm just going through boom, boom, boom as much as I can. I'm in black, but that's, that's a little screamy. However, just thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I love it so much. So It's you. like you guys get me. You guys get me and what I need out of my ramen. Not like a bunch of like stuff where I'm like, ah, oh, Game of Thrones. It's like it's like two people are in love and they just walk by each other slowly. Okay, slowly. I have to say, yes. In slow-mo. So the so Korean slow-mo is the best. It's just the best. They have just the, the best. No, they turn up the 80s wind all oh, the way. Oh, so good. All the way. And you don't even, you're just like, yes, more. More I am. That's all <laughs> it's okay. like. Are we reading the show tonight? <laughs> it's funny. Well, I, oh gosh, I traveled a lot to Korea. You did. So enough that I, I know how to, I remember more words than I can speak. So if I hear them, you know, it's like I can like, oh yeah, I remember what that means. Mool, water. We got to go back. Well, you, yep. I've never been. John's been. Many, I'm just a TV show has. fan, but I got, I got to go. Okay. Soul. In the winter is awesome. See, I got to go to Seoul in the winter. No, it's beautiful. There's this walkway through the central Seoul area that's down by this by the river that runs through it. And it's all lit. It, and so when the snow falls and that, that first inch of snow is coating all of the rocks and the plants and the river's cutting through and all the lights are on, it's awesome. It's beautiful. Um. Gosh, I wish I could remember where the name he of that. He's no feeling on this at all. Yeah. So. So you're like, oh man, I was just coming into a live show to see what was on YouTube, and these people lost their minds. I think it's bubble time. Is it? Mm hmm. We finished okay. another stage. You did. You staged up. So we've sketched it out. We've outlined it. We put a very rough uh, first layer of red with tinted with a little bit of black, so it's deep. This will help our red pop and be more vibrant as we like put the pure red over the top making it like ooh depth and everything it's like a really cool trick that you can do even when you're new to painting to make your painting have some sass and you need your painting to have some sass right mm -hmm. so this is a really fun thing and also i just wanted some bubbles so fun they, fridays you, you have totally been invited to uh join on uh gangs of bay so and i hope i pronounced that correctly so you're going to have to check it out after the show. You got some friends over in Korea who want to I hang out. love it. There you go. I'm into it. You're in. I'm into it. We're going to go stock celebrities. <laughs> okay. 
I'm a little hard to hide, though, with the pink hair. People see me coming. They're like, oh, <laughs> what is up with that lady? Okay, <laughs> Can I go out of the world? Especially now with the mask, because now we're doing the masks here. And so, like, I got to have the mask when I go out, but I have the pink hair. I have to say people are really not sure, like, what to do about that. But seriously, like, you know what I find funny? Pink mask bandit. What? We should paint. We should paint? You should paint some more. We'll talk okay. while we're painting. All right. Well, we're going to do a thing here. What are you going to do? We're going to do a really cool thing. We're going to paint that window in with some blue, dark blue. I'm all telling you what to do. Go paint. I don't mind. <laughs> I mean, somebody's got to keep me on task. Okay, so this is... Yeah, but we're I'm trying the to do this where everybody clearly. can paint along if they want to, like, in real time. So... We're letting them catch up sometimes. One of my... So, I used to hang out in Ilsan. I'm going to add some pure blue, Mr. I used to hang out in Ilsan. Ilsan is in North Seoul. Okay. And earlier tonight, you and I were talking about having some bagogi. Mm-hmm. And I think that's definitely... because Oh, there are... Let's get some green and paint underneath our truck wheel. Your your friends from Korea are definitely into doing some art. I am into that. I'm so glad. We're just going to paint back and forth. I just paint back it, and forth. Isn't it interesting how the universe just has things collide? It really does. It is. Like, I think, I think that we are in, we have a small planet and a small family. And sometimes we pretend that, you know, we're distant from each other, but I think we really share so much. Mm. I think we do. We're going to just do this nice green. This nice green. No. The thing about doing this green, and just in case you've never seen this before, yeah. and you'll see even on mine, it's very transparent, guys. It's a phthalo green is a very glazing, transparent color. So if you see it as transparent, that's why we got to do a layer and then come back and do another layer. Okay, so I don't, I don't want to change the subject, but I mm -hmm. ask a question about brushes. I got an answer about okay. brushes. Uh, long handle, short handle. What's the purpose? Uh, easel, table. What do you mean? So you paint with a long handle and an easel so you can get back and see what you're doing. Uh-huh. Uh, you will see uh, artists um, tape lots and lots of wood handles to each other. <laughs> so they can be about the same. It's quite fascinating to see them go. I'm going to get that. <laughs> that. And, and it's really cute. Um, but that's what it's about. It's about getting some distance from your art so you can see it. But when you're at a table, you get poked in the eye with the long handles. They're not really useful in that way. And so a short handle is a better. Really good companies make lines with both handle lengths mm. so that you can buy what's best for you um, for what you're doing. Let's dry this, though. Okay. we got to dry it for the yeah. next part. All right. Let me well. unclip my... My dryer. All right. Well, you'll do. I, I guess I'm gonna I'll unclip talk it. Stuff. Paper towel and unclip it. We'll talk about stuff while you're gone. Okay. So, what should we talk about? Well, you know, normally what I talk about here is um, color shift and not using heat when you dry your surface. Stuff you should, you know, like probably heard me say a million times before. But if you if you're here for the first time, I don't want to have you miss out so if you're drying your surface don't use heat and uh oh i just let the bubbles go didn't don't I? the bubbles let go well, they Go weren't forward. turning off i don't you have a button i have a button right i can turn them on so it's really nice a lot of times when you're very new to painting you don't realize that you want layers to either be wet like so when you want the layers to be wet is when you're trying to blend them together smoothly and when you want them to be dry is when you're layering them and if the layers aren't dry, the paint won't stick and it'll lift up and it'll lift up and it'll aggravate you so much. Mm. You don't need that aggravation. No. Let's get some pure red. Look at that. Load of pure red. And we're going to just go around our truck with our pure red. So, first of all, Sabrina, thank you so much for your support and help. Thank you, Sabrina. And she has a, she has a technical question. I she, have a I think, technical answer. Okay. So, if you're working 8 by 10 Okay. Would you be better off using a number four or a number eight? Does it matter? What's well, your Well, here's what. Use the biggest brush that you have control over. Okay. Right? So if I got too big of a brush here, I could probably make it work because I work the corner of my brush and stuff like that. But if I were really new, it would be really hard for me to have control over certain small spaces. 
So you always want to size to the biggest brush that isn't aggravating you. Because if I tried to paint this whole painting with this brush, it would be a very slow process. I would have to zoom way in there. That's a thing I see people who are new to painting do a lot. They get the tiniest, tiniest brush that they've got and try to paint it in. But if I came in with like a big giant brush, you could see where that might be a little bit harder to get control over if I were new. For me, not as much, but it could be harder, you know, making the turns or making sure I've got edges and everything that I need. And you see how the, the dark allows my red, even though it's a little bit transparent, to be very deep and bright? Mm hmm It's that layers thing, huh? It is that layers thing. And I very much like to paint this. this the way I'm painting it, where you see the brush strokes, this is called painterly. I'm not making it up. It really is. And it is the beginning artist friend. Now, if you were working on your round brush skills, mm -hmm. what would you suggest as a, so uh, Stephanie is, she's just having the hardest time working out her round brush skills and would, wanted to know if you had any recommendations on what she could do to work that out. Was there a. So there are warm up exercises, Stephanie, that you can do where you take your round brush and you take a practice canvas and you get far out the back because you want to really start to feel the spring on your brush. You don't want to press in too hard because if you press in too hard, the brush will splay out. And the game is how thick of a line can I make? How thin of a line can I make? How thick of a line can I make? How thin of a line? And then also practice arabesque and S strokes. Now that's you want to practice those arabesque and S strokes. Those are the curves with the round brush. You want to practice how hard you're pressing. So it's really about like taking a little bit of time and practicing brush strokes. I think that's something that sometimes the one stroke people have, they realize that they've got to do is practice their brush strokes. But sometimes, you know, in more fine art painting or traditional painting, we, we don't really think to do that as much. Really sit down and get to know your brush. Get to, yeah, sit down, get to know your brush, get to know your materials every once in a while. Practice blending, practice mm -hmm. clouds, practice grass. Just practice these things because nobody just is just one and done and then they just understand it miraculously. I think sometimes we're told that there's a talent fairy and you get, you get gifts from the talent fairy and therefore you can do things or you don't and therefore you can't. But really what it is is just perseverance and practice. Now, do you happen to have a number four and number eight round? I probably do. I know I've got a 12 and I've got a four. I don't think I have an eight round here right now. I think they're hmm. with my um, black pearls. Maybe. But here's a 12. Oh, That's wow. 12. Oh, my gosh. That's right? a monster. And this is my four. Oh, but again, wow. remember we talked about earlier, these brush numbers are kind of irrelevant. Oh, but that's still huge. Look it's at that. Still it's still huge. It's like, okay. You know, whereas like in my, in my line, here's a cat's tongue and a four. So okay. it's just about finding those sizes for which you are comfortable. There we got that nice kind of loose painterly space. You can come through and layer where you want bright pops of red. I definitely highly suggest... Making sure the roof has got some bright pops of red. And then top of the fender is great. Isn't that nice? This is the longest, simplest painting we've ever done. Yeah, well, we're trying to slow down and be <laughs> chill for everybody. I can go faster. I didn't know we were doing fast. Oh, no, I just realized that I've been lollygagging. <laughs> okay. I was worried. I was like, have I been dragging along, talking with everybody? It's so, okay. It's this night. We we cook along. You know, tomorrow we paint a more serious painting. We paint a very realistic truck and a landscape. We're going to take some of our blue and kind of mix it with some white. We want it to be more blue. And we're going to come here and make some little reflections in the window. At the end of Sometimes the show. Sometimes you can grab some just blue and you just want to make sure that it's streaky. Right there, it's a little streaky. Yeah. And then once you've got that little bit of streakiness, grab, grab some white and come across. And that's kind of how we're going to first start talking about that this is glass. 
I'm going to grab a little now, bit here and come into my rear view mirror. Now for people, there you who, go. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have some color commentary here. So okay. that little spouty thing sticking out from the edge under the rear view mirror. Yeah. Sometimes on the bed of a truck, that'll have a, a round, a Rolled little round edge. thing. It's right. Now, sometimes they don't. So it depends. Chevy, Dodge, Ford, depending on the year that make the model, that little flared edge may or may not have a round rolled edge. So depending on your personal preference of truck, that may or may not immediately make sense depending on whether or not you add that little roundness to it. Then you'll be like, oh, yeah. gotcha. I see it. I so, am adding a little bit of light here. This is for when I'm going to put the kind of license plate in. It just lets me have some delineation between where it's going to be. And then I'm going to also kind of add a bit of that dry brush, which is really about taking my brush and running it very little water kind of close to the canvas and with light pressure. So it skips over the surface and the brush like picks up. Hmm. Guess what we got to do? Dry it. Dry it. Indeed. It needs to be dried. It does. It needs to be dry for the next part. So while she's drying that, I'll say thank you guys for coming and hanging out with us. It's wonderful to have this, you know, crowd of folks. And, you know, I always find it amazing that we have nearly 400 people here just celebrating art. And that's kind of amazing when you think about it, that on a random Friday evening that we're all getting together, just hanging out here for the sole purpose of having fun with art. Having and fun with art. I'm loading up white guys on the edge of my brush. Look at that. Got a number. This is a number six bright. Got a little bit there. I'm going to just come here. I'm going to make some reflections around the... See, a little bit trying to Ooh. say that, oh, that truck's a little shiny, isn't it? Yeah. Let's put some reflections here on the mirror. They're like little touches. You just put them where you want to sit there and say light is shiny. Sometimes it's nice to put some in the rear view mirrors. I think they're helpful. So Jennifer was asking, could you use these same techniques to draw, to uh, paint a semi? Yes. Exact same techniques will do a semi. And especially if you look at the uh, late 70s, early 80s Kenworth trucks, they have very similar lines. Little reflection there, little reflection there. Let's definitely reflect the on that little Ooh. rear end thing there. The fender. Yeah, a little fender. And then maybe just a little bit right here, like a little more serious. I'm going to go ahead and kind of come around here with a little bit of interest on the wheel this time. I'm just bringing a little shading back on the wheel. Shading back. Let's get back into our number four round and let's clean up our outlines on all of these structures. And this is going to help it like really pop. And then it's grass, flowers, and done, guys. Now, what brand of paint are you using today? I am using the abstract on the Friday night. So how this is working is Friday nights, we do a very beginner focus class. Like for if you're really, you know, painting a group or new painters, you want to get back to some basic techniques or just have a chill night where you're laughing and having a good time. And we're going to use 9 by 12 canvases. We are uh, the art boards. And we're going to mm -hmm. use the abstract acrylic paint because it's an economy paint. So it's like, um, I think it's better than Liquitex Basics or the Artist Loft or some of the uh, economy brands. I think it's like more pigmented, but it's in that price point. So it gives you some similar comparison and you'll see how I solve the challenges that student paint can sometimes give. Yeah. And then on Saturday, we kick it up to two and three hoot, our more complicated, more advanced classes. And we visit the topic uh, on a bigger canvas and we do it with, we're either going to do 11 by 14 or an 8 by 8 square, and we're going to really get into the techniques and layers and colors and all the stuff. And they'll always be like, uh, I think I'm going to make them topic related. So like this week is trucks, and the next week is uh, tropical landscapes, palm trees. Ooh. So you That's just exciting. follow that, and then you'll yeah. be like, oh, man, I'm learning all about stuff. And that way, also, if you're like new, you can kind of see what's the difference. 
between so, these painting experiences. Let's come on the top of this, come on the back of that, and then down the tailgate. It's an important defining line. See how that line just anchors everything? Now, are trucks something you normally paint? Yes. Yeah? The vintage trucks, for sure. You're a... And old rusty cars, for you sure. Like, you like the old ones. NASCARs, not so much yet. Not so much the mass ones, but these, you're kind of into these, yeah? I like them. They're cute. And I think that they remind us of just happiness and simple times. Farm trucks, I don't know. They just bring me some joy. Okay. See, so, we're just creating that little inset there. So, Natalia. Natalia, how are we, you? She's also a KTV fan. Is she a KTV fan? And, and she is the, she loves you. She loves that. She would love to see some Korean art. Oh, you know, I have been thinking about it. I've, I've been thinking about painting Maximus. <laughs> 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 just, uh, I'm just with everyone else. I'm just like, there's just some stuff that I'm like, this would be really fun to do. Be fun, fun to do. Well, thank you, friend Natalia, for joining us. And for everyone else who's joining us tonight, you know, we've got a great big 404 error happening. So thank you. We have a 404 error? You know, there's over 404 people. I just Oh, looked up. that's so fun. We are Sherpa. It's we should bubble. 411. All right. See, we're going to come going on up. the inside of the mirror. So what we're doing is we're creating these sort of anchoring, stabilizing lines. Now, I like to write the word okay. love. I think what we look at on our canvases impacts uh, our living experience. So I try to put things out there. I try to be really thoughtful about how my images will impact me and how I feel. Is Now, this kind of lined art, Yes. does it have a... This is almost in that sense of kind of rustic outsider art. Um, huh. It's, you know, just a lot of fun. And I think I'm going to do one of these with a little bit of yellow. Looking at my, I think I'm going to put a little bit of yellow into my, let's take a little of your yellow over into my red. Just real quick to make a brighter thing. So, you know, not really technically because it's also kind of got that painting party feel. That you might see. I'm just kind of adding some brighter. Sometimes if you add a little. Sometimes if you add a little yellow to something. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Just creates another little dimension. Just a little bit of, of that there. Diana but the thing is, is like whatever style of art that you're painting in the style, the methodology. Yeah. I mean, it, we could be like painting. Cubism, we could be painting Impressionism, we could be painting, well, not concept expressionism, because that's like a banana taped to the wall. But, um, we did you, that. <laughs> we did do we that. Did if you want to know how to make your own banana taped to a wall art, I got a tutorial for that. However, that being said, <laughs> if you were like, wait, you do? I'm like, that's, yes, I do. That's a step by step tutorial. That's probably one of my favorite tutorials, by the way. That's one of my favorites, too. That's but perfect. it doesn't really matter what you're doing because there's basic techniques that no matter what you're doing, you're across all of your things so even when you learn a project like this it still will carry you to more complicated projects right well, these techniques carry i gotta dry this john okay you, you dry it i'm gonna say thank you to diane blow some bubbles for diane i will blow bubbles huh i'll, I'll do that so i'll blow bubbles i'll turn the bubbles on do, do, do. here's the bubbles diane you've got some bubbles and Stephanie, you've got some bubbles. Thank you, guys. I think I can't show you the bubbles. There, the bubbles are coming. See, they're they're slowly drifting down. They're bubbling in, bubbling in. That's what the bubbles do. Okay, so thank you, guys. Thank you for coming and hanging out. It makes my night every night when I see all you guys hanging out with me. It's probably my favorite thing is to know that y'all are out there painting with us. Da, 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 da. Do, do, do we have bubbles? Good. Okay, so see this water here? It's Which too one? dirty. Put it aside. Get cleaner water. Otherwise, the next part won't be bright. Whenever you're working in your yellows, it's really, really important that you get your water clean because mm -hmm. all the pigment in that water will start to make your colors dingy and not as bright. So if you're finding you're having a real problem with that, check and make sure that your water isn't dirty because that's something that happens to us when we're new. And you might not know that, that that dirty water can get back into your painting. 
Let's make some grass. All right, now I'm going to show you a trick. I'm going to take a little red over to my green. And when you add a little red to your green, because these are complementary colors, what that's going to do is deepen that green. Makes kind of like a forest green. Right? So it's like I have two kinds of greens here. And you're going to see me roll. It might even be a good idea to wipe off. What I want to do is get my paint onto the tip of my brush. I'm going to come here. I'm going to plant the toe and I'm going to stroke up. My strokes will have curves. Look how the curves. Curves. This is the hardest part if you're new on this painting. Is and I'm very lightly on the toe. I'm going to turn this around for a second and show okay. you two things. What's the toe? Okay. So the toe of the brush is right here. And what a lot of times when you're new that you want to do grass is you're going to do this. You're going it's to tip. Kind of make a very even, the strokes right. are a little too pressed. See how pressed they are? Can the camera show how pressed these are? Yeah. So this press, right? That's never going to get you the grass stroke that you want. So I'm going to load up. I'm going to come much lighter. And I'm going to curve my strokes. And they're going to go random different directions. Oh, yeah. And I'm just barely pressing, aren't I? Yes. So that's how I'm getting that. If you're getting that, you probably have a little too much pressure and you need to just like, like pull back, be breath, pull back and Ooh. don't mow the grass. Don't. Don't mow the grass. If you what want it to look wild and unruly. That's right. And you do want your flowers and your leaves to look wild and unruly. It can be nice to bring some of these down now. When you're doing this at first to your eyes, you'll be like, oh my gosh, it's almost black, but it's really not. And when you do the brighter layers of green on top of it, this will help them really pop. And also, it's really good to know some of those color mixing techniques. Like, how do I take a very vibrant color and make it more neutral? Bring some leaves different directions, right? That's a nice little basis for that. You come down here and loading up more. And I'm going to begin the business okay. of growing grass down underneath my truck. How do growing you grass. know when to change your water? <sighs> Start with often until you get a sense of uh, when you see it's murky, right? When you see it's murky, it's a good idea to change it. If you change your water often, you won't r run into those initial problems of having dirty, dingy water. Now, it's especially important. Without seeing everybody's water cup, it's kind of like there's this moment where you're like, oh, that's just not going to work no more. And you, and you get a sense of it as you paint, paint, paint. But when you're new, you don't really know where that threshold is, especially for your paint or the different colors you're using. Like for if you're using black in your paint, you're going to want to change that water a lot. We're going to come down and make some more grass. See how we're layering it? Uh-huh. You know, can I say, or let me, let, me, let, me, let me say an armchair question comment. I would love an armchair question comment, sir. Give it to me. It seems that when you're using contrasting colors mm -hmm. like yellow and purple yes you would need to change your m colors more often than when you're say using yellow and green mm. yeah i would say that's probably true i would say black will make you have to change your colors if, if your color is highly pigmented that definitely can impact how often you have to come in and sort of change that too but it seems that contrasting contrast will do it. Contrasting dirty water will make your paint yeah. grayish. Whenever you mix a color, you expect to get it. Like you're, you're like, you know, oh yeah, grade school. Yellow and red make orange, and then you mix it, and you're like, that is oh. not in any way orange. Whatever you have that experience, what there is is a hidden primary in the color, and that hidden primary is creating a, a contrast okay. which grays the color. So now. Can I have to say, I thought that was a trick. It's so true, though. I thought it was like, I was so... Well, I can show it right now. I was so messed up when they said, what do you mean, you know, yellow and blue don't make... So this is a pretty, this is a, this is a red that looks a little bit like a sunset, right? 
when I mix this blue into it, it's a purple, but it's not the bright purple I'm expecting it's to get. It's a gray purple. It's a gray purple. And when I add white to it, you can see that it's yeah. very gray. That's a hidden primary. This blue has a green bias, right? And this red has a yellow bias. And what are the primaries? They're red, yellow, and blue. If your color mix contains biases that will give you red, yellow, and blue in any combination, you will see the color graying a bit. But sometimes you love that. Sometimes it's something that you want. But if you're not ready for it or you don't know what's coming and you take ultramarine and mix yellow into it and you get a very green gold that's, that's muted, that could be very frustrating. But if you're trying to create deep foliage, that's awesome. Mm. So it's really about perspective, isn't it? Let's Every, rinse out. You know. And we're going to take, speaking of, we're going to take a bunch of our green over here to where our yellow is and make some very bright green. See this bright green here? And the yellow is brightening our green, isn't it? And if I really want it to show bright, I can come in and add just a smidge of white. If you add too much white, it'll go mint on you, but sometimes white will help reveal the color. Let's come here on our toe and add some brighter grass. Sometimes it can have more phthalo blue in it. That's okay. Sometimes it'll have more yellow in it. That's also okay. It's fun to do. It is fun. Now, this is typically a one, a level one painting. This is a level one painting. We and just we're take traveling. Time. We're going very slow through the painting. We're not fast forwarding. I'm not. I'm not painting at my speed. We're talkity talkity. We're talking and we're letting you paint along with us and find your rhythm and your speed because there isn't really a speed component of painting. But those who have been in the room who've been with me for a while know that I kind of I go fast, but I'm I am working on these beginner ones where we slow down a little bit and and you know try to figure out what we're gonna do. I'm gonna add a little white to that. You know how that does? Mm. That's especially when you're painting those student paints, do those tricks. Especially. 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 Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Now we got some leaves in the back. And if you ever need to come back with any like green, you just come back with the pure thalo and you're good. Let's do some grass down below. Ooh, down below. Okay. Down below, down below. Another Hit layer. The grass down below. And it's just about. Having layers. Look at that, that grass layers. Just so green. Growing up so happy and so green. And it blows and it goes different directions, doesn't it? Because the wind's blowing through it. Mm. And we have these nice areas that are deep, and that's because grass has shadows in it when it's real thick like this. There you go. Look at that nice little shadow. Paint it down. And notice that I'm not doing a row, a row, a row. I'm weaving. The grass is weaving. So I'm not doing this, right? Because that would make a row. Hold on, hold on. Let me go pair see. All right. I'm not making a row. Uh huh. I want to weave, which means some of these will be at different heights. We're weaving the grass. See how that creates much more of a grassy feel. But if I make rows, that won't feel that grassy. If I come in and I weave, isn't it completely different? Doesn't that just blow your mind? You can mm -hmm. do that. Little tricks. Sometimes you just need to know the little tricks. That's all you need. You just need a little help with the little tricks, and then you're like, I'm golden. I'm good. Oh, let's see here. So we're weaving. You're weaving. You know, it breaks the eye line. You know, you can always come back with darker colors and lighter colors. What you really want to do is weave those brush strokes together and hide the pattern or hide the streakiness through that process so that a problem becomes your feature. 
The trick with student products is, is anything can make a great painting. You just have to know the nature. I'm just adding a little white into my yellow green. So you can really see that. The trick is, is that you can absolutely make any problem a feature. You just have to know what the nature of the art material is. A little darker under the truck, right? Because the truck might have a little bit of shadow. It's a fun thing to think about. And if it gets away from you, just come back with your phthalo green. Look at that. Oh, wow. The layers will only make it better. Look at that nice grass. Rinse, 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 rinse. I'm going to take a little white and a little yellow on the tip of my brush. This is fussy. And I'm going to make little dots. Oh, that's too much. Ooh, that's great. I like to add white to my yellow because sometimes yellow tends to be a very transparent color. And if I want it to really show, I have two ways to do that. I've got to paint all my flowers white first and then paint over them with yellow. Or I can do this kind of loosely mixed thing. And that will get me where I'm trying to go. And see, I'm just touching the toe of the brush. Mm -hmm. Just touching the toe. And that's how I get that. And it's a bit, you know, it's a bit involved. I'm going to pull some of this over here that's out of the way of my green or where I'm going to get a bunch of green flowers. <laughs> and these are just all through here, just like give them little blooms. And you can see that the white does help it show up, but it still feels like yellow flowers. Just touch them. They don't even have to be attached to leaves. Mm -hmm. You know, be, be free enough to be like, you know, I don't really need to be that on a leaf. Maybe the, some of these blooms are down low in, in the base of, basin of the truck. You know, also remember, if you have a directionality that you're stronger on, turn the canvas. Don't turn your body, turn the canvas. Mm-hmm. You don't work for your art. Your art works for you. <laughs> don't let your body get out of position. Some of these are small. Some are bigger. And that just creates this sense of, oh, well, like, oh, that's, that's nice. There's some, there's some different stalks of flowers. Man, these flowers are awesome. They're just I have fun. To say, I, I have to, I always enjoy ha how much when we have people from all over the world. I do love that. Shahad has been joining us and been hi. shouting. Out. She's from Saudi Arabia. Hi, so. hi, hi. Alaysa Malika. It's just fun. You know, and I, I love it, uh, you know, to, to hear about what people's art stores are like and what their art experience is like and their art scene. I think that's one of the blessings that I've gotten from being on YouTube is that I've really gotten to be familiar mm -hmm. with how, you know, how everybody else is painting. And it's, it's exciting. Yeah. That's probably one of the most exciting things for me is like connecting with all the people all over the world who paint. It that's just a, feels good. That's like art is such an awesome connective thing. It just is. And it helps us, it helps us hear ourselves. It helps us find our center. You know, uh, you get the benefits of painting far before your paintings start to make you feel like, oh, because it takes a minute when you're learning how to paint to feel like your paintings are great. Mm -hmm. It does. It takes a minute to be just like, you know, when you're new, it's real easy to get into the habit of like, well, this isn't perfect, or I want to paint like this artist, or or feeling like your paintings need to be a thing. However, the benefit, the benefit to your spirit, the benefit to your imagination, the benefit to your problem solving and your well-being, that happens no matter how the painting comes out. The real riches of art 
are not about the result, but about the journey. Every once in a while, if you're doing a lot of dabs, be sure you rinse your brush out because the paint will start to dry on your brush and throw off your brush stroke. Because acrylic paint be like that. And some brands of acrylic paint, you know, are more like that than others. And everybody has different formulations around the world. That's what I've learned. Hmm. They're the same, and you can, you can mix and match them for sure. But some are more likely to dry quickly. Uh, some blend better and have less drag on the brush. It's just really different for everybody. Sometimes I like to get more white into it. Just playing with those little dots. How are you guys doing with your dots? Dotting away. Enjoy this part of the painting. This is probably the most enjoyable part of the painting. Mm. I mean, it is for me. It may be different for you. We are certainly human now, beings and are not carbon that? copies. Why do you like that? Why do you, why do you find this to be the enjoyable part? It's a fun, repetitive task that has a lot of positive to the final part of the painting. Yeah. So I get to relax. It's, it's not technique heavy. You know, I'm not like blending wet into wet or having to really deal with a more complicated technique and conditions and all those things that can impact my painting. It's just sort of like, oh, I'm just making a little flower dog. <laughs> and that's always lovely. Right? Like we're just, all that's happening is all of your grass is blooming. Mm. It's blooming. And we haven't even gotten into the red yet, yo. The bloom. It is the bloom. Now, you don't have to do this painting in student paint. You can do it in pearl paint. And all the difference is going to be is that the colors will be even more vibrant. Yeah. You know, and the coverage will be better. That's the difference. More vibrant, different coverage. I hear them switching. I hear the clicking. <laughs> you guys are the best. Sometimes Thank you for you... coming tonight and being with us. Let's bring some flowers way up high. Sometimes okay. it's fun to do. Take some flowers so, up into the sky. Sabrina asks a very interesting question. Hi, Sabrina. Okay. So if you're painting along with this heavy body paint and all of a sudden you find that you get these weird bumps where like one flower is kind of lumpy and the other flower is kind of smooth, is that okay? Yeah. Heavy body can, paint is designed to show the brush stroke. Can I zoom in on that? Yeah. yeah I'm I'll do, zoom in I'll on do that. some exaggerated ones. How's that? Okay. I'm going to do some exaggerated ones. Oh, yeah. See, look at that right there. And a good paint, as it dries, won't shrink and make those vanish. Yeah. Good see. heavy body. That's why you do heavy body paint is it shows the paint stroke. It shows that. And that's what we like about it. Now, that, there's a word for that somewhere. Impasto. It's an Italian word, isn't impasto. it? Impasto. Impasto. We're painting in an impasto. You're sitting here doing this little track with me. You didn't even know you were painting. So you've done some outsider art, you've done some painterly art, and you've done some impasto. Now I'm in Florence on a, on a piazzo saying ciao. You are, man, and it's just as good. Isn't that wonderful? Mm-hmm. That's a lot of flowers, but I felt like we needed red in there. Now, you can look at that. That's great. That's terrific. But let's get our red out because it's here anyways, and we might as well use it all up. Ooh. And so, that pop, I feel, between the two flowers, the red and the yellow, makes just, this painting. Just added some random flower. Yeah, just add a few random flowers. These are like poppies, you know, or Indian paintbrushes. That is that I, Indian paintbrushes, right? I feel like you call them poppies because you just popped them in. Well, no, there's poppies and there's Indian paintbrushes and then there's blue bonnets and then um, there is, uh, it's not mustard, it's um, rapeseed. Mm. Oh, those are um, soybeans, right? Something, yeah. Yeah, I think rapeseed and soybeans are, I think they're the same thing. So the kind of or paint, similar. when you're painting loosely, they sort of all paint out the same way. We're 
all painted out the same way. Sandy's a fan of impasto. Impasto, Sandy. Impasto. Say it with me, you guys at home. Impasto. So in art, we're either hiding the medium or showing the medium. Hmm. What right? do you mean? So like in hyperrealism, you're hiding the medium with which you created the piece. Uh, you're trying to create a real moment that's realer than life. So... You okay, wouldn't so, show necessarily the paint, but in something like expressive or impressionistic, you really want to show what you use. You want to show the creation of the piece. So no, like this I, shows it. For those who haven't heard you use the term medium before, what does that do you mean? So uh, all the stuff that you create art with is your medium. If it's colored pencils, you're working in a colored pencil medium. If it's watercolor, you're working in a watercolor medium. If it's multimedia, you're working with lots of different types of art materials. But medium is the type of art material that you're working in. Ah. And first day that you're painting right now, you're working in an acrylic medium. Okay. So that makes, yeah. that makes sense. Oh, by the way, first painting, you're an artist. You don't have to wait to call yourself one. If you paint art, then you're an artist. It is not determined by sales or art shows or uh, awards or degrees. It's simply created by the act of making art. Having an that internal voice. That is an voice. official definition, yo. Hmm? Having an internal voice and expressing it. That's all it is. And you're an artist even if you're painting tutorials and you're an artist if you're doing your own like paint pours. It just doesn't matter. You're an artist if you're making art. Hmm. Nobody gets to tell you otherwise. Though sometimes they will try. <laughs> You send them to me and I'll set them straight. <laughs> They'll be sorry they came. <laughs> no, they were <laughs> actually pretty nice. But I would probably correct them and like remind them about, you know, the fundamental tenets of art. <laughs> 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 Sometimes it's like, like oh, I'm going to get them. I just added some red. Okay, well, I've just done it. You could just I think what it is, is I've had such a lovely night with you guys. I don't want it to end, but I'm afraid we might have come to our end. We may have. Do you know what? We might have gotten there. We have drawn a one hoot painting out a little bit. We did. We did. We could do it in 20, 30 minutes, but here's the thing. Painting along, come by Friday nights if you want to have that fun, lighthearted, unhurried live experience. We're not fast forwarding. We're not rushing you through. We're laughing. We're having a good time. Okay. Um, next week. Mark. This is our Friday painting next week. Okay, I'm going to fix that. This is our Friday next Please week. scroll over. So come by next Can week. Can we go forward? See it different? I'll face forward. You can see that. See, see so much better there. Right? So there this go. is what we did today. Tomorrow, we're going to paint a realistic truck from a photograph. So I'm going to show you how you do that. Next Friday night, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Mountain, 4 p.m. Pacific. The clock here should auto adjust to your time zone. Whatever your computer is set to, it will auto adjust. If you've got a VPN on there, well, good luck. It just, it's going to guess where you live. But, <laughs> but if you're, if whatever your computer clock thinks, as long as you don't have something that hides where you are, YouTube will set your time. But just start, start at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time and world clock correct it to wherever you live. We are that time every Friday and we'll meet for around an hour in Paint a Simple Painting. Can I say thank you to everybody? We've had such yeah. an amazing community. Thank you to Mark. Thank you to all of our patrons. I mean, Mark, you paint every day. I feel like we should be paying you. You're painting every day. Thank you for painting with us. Oh my gosh. Thank you for everyone who's painting with us. I love you guys being here. It's the highlight of my life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And let's make it our mission. Let's get all of our friends. Let's get all of our family. Let's get everybody into art. Oh, People are so much better when they do art. You know art. what? Hey, Cinnamon, you were totally about to pull a Sherpa. I was? Yeah. You what, the you thing where do? I say goodbye? You, no, you did something like, I'm going I'm to turn around, look at that painting. Tell me what's missing. Uh, it's a guess. See if you can figure it out. Uh, look at the painting. I wrote the word love. I, I don't know what's missing. It's missing something. Oh, signature. You didn't sign it. <laughs> they, were, they were all yelling, sign it, sign it, sign it. Sign it. So I was like, <laughs> it's just so funny. It was like, oh, I don't know. Maybe I should make her. 
I guess if she really, really, really wants to sign it, we'll go down here. So there she goes. Oh, look at that signature. White. Uh, the white makes it look really nice. I try to sign my painting in a color and in a way that doesn't disrupt the whole composition. Disrupt? Yeah. Well, I'm sometimes, all... you know, if you write a big name across it in red, then that becomes part of the composition. But, you know, I just try to make sure that what I'm signing is thoughtful and doesn't pull the eye too much or detract from all the hard work I did. So there, there we go. I almost pulled a Sherpa, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm all about that. <laughs> Oh, that looks good. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for reminding us that we didn't forget to sign. That was, oopsie. That was pretty awesome. So this week, next week, tomorrow, uh, I think it's at noon. And even if you're very, very new and you came in and you showed up and you're like, I just want to start. I just want it to be light and easy. And I, don't know, I like this free class because I'm just trying to figure out if I like it and I don't want to spend a lot of money on materials. Even if you're at that place, which, by the way, is an awesome place to be because it's just the beginning and the beginning is great. Still come by tomorrow. Hang out and chat because you're going to learn from the techniques. Even if you're not ready to like, like really throw down yet, come by, hang out, ask questions, like be part of our vibe. It's totally OK. We're still pretty fun. We just cook. We just move along a little faster. <laughs> Be good to yourself, be good to each other, and I want to see you at Anisa really soon. Bye-bye.